Well, hello, uh, back again. Um, I'm back doing some live coding, or at least I will try to do this. I've tried it last year for a couple of times and then it stopped. So hopefully this time it will be a bit better. Um, well, welcome back for the persons who are, well, viewing me again and have, have kept on uh, viewing on uh, my, my episodes. So what I'll be doing today is uh, fig figuring out how my setup works uh, today. Um, I'm using OBS Studio now instead of Streamlabs OBS, so uh, I have to figure out some stuff. Um, also figuring out the, the noise level of my mic, of the music, the background music, and interacting with chat so uh, today will be a lot about 
figuring out how the tech stuff works and while doing so I'll be doing some arm, arm templates uh, and key vault additions. Uh, what I want to do is add a key vault to an arm template and add some access policies to it because we have uh, a webcast plant with uh, well, I have a webcast planned with a couple of my co-workers, my colleagues, uh, where we're going to explain something about key faults, something about DevOps and securing your pipeline and, well, a lot of Azure goodness. And for this, I need to prepare some, well, prep work in order to talk about it uh, on Wednesday. So we'll be recording a webcast on Wednesday and after I'm finished editing it, it'll get published hopefully next week. I'll tweet a link to the latest episodes when it's ready. Hopefully you'll watch it. Um, as you might know, I also record this session. Uh, it gets recorded on Twitch automatically. Uh, but I also upload a recording to, YouTube, to my YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, Please subscribe to this channel and you will get updated whenever there's a new post of my coding sessions. I also got a new design for my uh, well live coding setup. Hope you like it. If so, please let me know. If not, well, too bad. <laughs> I already paid a lot of money for it, so hopefully you like it. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, mentioned, I'm trying out uh, uh, stuff today. So if there's something not working or not working properly, in your opinion, please let me know. Uh, last time I, I got uh, some notification the music was too loud. So i rather have you telling me in chat it's too loud. So I can edit it during the stream in order to figure out what the best level is for me to listen to the music. And for you, well, not to get annoyed by the music. I'm using pretzel rocks. I've got the chill station set up today, um, which uh, should be working. Let me see, back to OBS, update information. I am back doing some configuring of Azure Key Vault. Cool, cool, that's me indeed. only see three tags on Twitch. That's probably the max. I had configured a couple of extra. Apparently you can only have three, three tags. Let's try again. Software development, programming, web development. Well, it should be family friendly, but let's not mark it. Update information. Now it has all of the tags. Refreshing the page. Well, Twitch only shows three. I can live with this. So let's uh, let's get started on on the coding stuff. I'm using a Stream Deck, so I also have to get used. To this a bit where the buttons are and my mappings so hopefully I'm going to the coding scene now it looks good and start some music so if something is not uh, it's, it's not uh, good if you can't hear something please let me know hopefully I'll get an update on this chat window I have over here I also have OBS open. So as I mentioned, uh, what I want to do for today is something which I've done a couple of times already. Uh, I want to create a key fault in some uh, Azure subscription using an ARM template and add some additional uh, policies to it. So I have to start one note to see what the edits are we made for the for the webcast the notebook about me 
So what I need to do is let me open up uh, some scratch pad. Um, closing this. So what I want to do is add an MSI oh, ground and an MSI access to Azure key fold. Zoom in a bit so you can see it. Um, Around the um, app service resource provider access to key fault. This is special identity. I'll come back to this when I get to this. And well, in order to do this, we obviously need some key fault uh, in our Azure subscription. So add Fault to arm template and deploying it via Azure DevOps. I have to check if I have something in place already. Adding Firefox. So let me check. Costs. Oh, sorry. So I'm doing some stuff on my other screen in order to check if there aren't any secrets. Files. Cool. Uh, pipelines set up and the release is also set up correctly this looks okay cool so I'll help you out a bit and um, masks so I'll zoom in a bit. So what we have over here is our, sorry, our repository for, or our Azure DevOps organization project for our, the Fordotnet webcasts. Uh, I'm one of the presenters at. What we have over here is some repository with a, well, rather simple website, a web API, and some deployment files, adding application insights, an app service, well, some, some basic stuff, using some link templates. As you might see over here, we're using the link templates. We have the CI in place already. The CI is, uh, well, what you expect. It's, it's building the, the web application on an Ubuntu image, so it's Linux, and it publishes the artifact. Also, the in a deployment file, and it's zipping, so package as a package, it should deploy the stuff as a package. Where's my chat window? There it is. It would be nice if this stayed on top of everything. It's part of OBS, so probably not possible. Yeah, I just have to not add windows on top of it. Cool. Moving the pretzel rock screen a bit. Moving one out. So I'm doing this, this webcast with a couple of co-workers, like I mentioned. One of them is Eduard Kyles, uh, one of them is Arno Peters, and if we're lucky, we'll probably, 
we'll probably see Erwin Stahl his name also. So this is the the pipeline. The pipeline is also rather simple, or at least if you've done this a couple of times. Uh, we're mo moving uh, we're moving the, the, the files to my Azure subscription, my 4.NET subscription. Uh, nothing fancy over here. Um, getting, I'm receiving the URL and the SAS token where it's copied to. I'm using this to update, or at least I'm using this to deploy all of the resources using the Azure Deploy JSON with some parameters and of course the, the SAS token stuff. Output parameters which we are not using. It was just a sample for one of our earlier webcasts and deploying the website as a package. So we don't have to check this today. Fork. Let's see where it spins up. For that net webcasts. Cool. So I don't know if we can zoom fork. I'm using fork as a Git client. Apparently you can zoom in. So uh, there's nothing special going on over here. I'm pulling the latest version. Apparently I'm already there. What we did last time is adding link templates to the to the repository for our webcast. Minimizing. Now I have to check code. I always use code whenever working with ARM templates. Let's see if I have it open. No. Open in. Let's see if this button works. Apparently it does. Cool. So this isn't very fancy. Oh, this is the app service, Jason. We don't need it today. The parameters also not very well necessary. And the de Azure deploy.json. So if you remember, the first thing we need to do is add key fault to the ARM template. This shouldn't be too hard, but just I have some other repositories where I've already added it. Let's check the Azure Resource Manager template reference, <coughs> just to be sure. I don't know how this how this works. Key fault should be key fault. See, it's it's just here. So I need to specify the name, the type, the default stuff, and some other stuff. I think all of this is optional. So don't need it for now, because what I want to do is show the access policies or demo the access policies. So let me just copy this. Adding a new file, pvault.json. this stuff resources oh. outputs 
I don't think I want to output something, but you never know. Resources is an array of stuff, or this should be an array of stuff, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check. Yeah, it's an array of objects. We don't need this variable. And well, we do want the instance name because this will be, well, the name of our key vault. One thing I learned from, uh, from my coworker, Eduard, he has a very nice post, uh, Hex Master on ARM templates, uh, which he posted, uh, well, last week on the 19th of March. So what he states over here is for every parameter he has, he creates a variable. And I actually like uh, working like this. Um, you can check it in over here. Maybe I can post it myself. Yes, I can post links to the chat. Cool. Pro tip. Uh, based on variables is easier. So what he says is every parameter has a variable so you can well just without any thinking use a variable with a name everywhere in your template. And you don't have to think about if it's a parameter or a variable whatever. So this is a I don't know if this is best practice. It's something I want to try out because I think it's a good idea. You do have some, well, clutter in your friable block, but it's it's worth, I think it's, it's worth it. So now I need an instance name, which is, uh, well, which is the instance name, which I can use. which I can use over here. Might want to add this one also. So, pasting stuff. Probably need to... Where is this? And this one, yes. Indenting the stuff. This one is necessary. This one belongs to the top. This is the resource and this is the oh the properties. So probably oh, over here. I need some additional indenting. There's probably some prettifier. Pretty beauty format much better API version yeah okay I just copied it from the documentation so I think this is the correct version isn't there a newer one 2018 no this is the newest 2014, 15, and 16. Yeah. Probably because of the scheme. Oh, the scheme is also 2019. I don't know. <laughs> Probably works. So the name, what do I want to call it? Well, right. instance name. Now. Well, this is, uh, I'm already deploying it to a resource group, so a resource group dot location. I always deploy all of the, all of my resources to the same resource group and location, unless in a very specific scenario, but most of the time the same resource group and location works fine for me. 
tres. Tags, I don't need tags. Tags are also optional, right? Can I make this? Tags are optional. Required now. So I don't want them today. Required, yes, yes, yes. Properties, yes. Tenant, tenant ID. Okay, this is uh, something I probably want to inject, uh, or do I want to hard code it? No, I want to inject this. Why? Well, because. At the moment, I'm deploying it to my subscription and my tenant. But whenever Eduard or Erwin or Arno wants to deploy it to their subscription and their tenant, they want their own ID over here. So I need another parameter and ID type string. Now I need this one, then and I need a comma. I just thought maybe my keyboard is a bit loud. The mic is well just above the keyboard. It's a mechanical keyboard. It has O rings, so typing on it should be well, not too annoying, but when the mic is so close to it, I can imagine it's annoying when I type. The tenant. Family A. I think family is name. It's, it's a skew. Good. Family name A. Name you want to specify whether the key fault is standard fault or premium fault. Standard or premium. I want standard. So what else do we have? The skew. Access policy is not required. An array of 0 to 16. Apparently, you can only add 16 identities to this, which should be enough in most scenarios, as you probably want to add groups to this, and not all of the people inside your organization. Still something to consider. When create mode set to recover, X policies are not required. Otherwise, X policies are required. Sorry. Must use the same tenant ID. Create mode. Where's create mode? Whether the fault need to be recovered or not. Hmm. Well, I don't need to recover it at the moment. Enabled for deployment. Enabled for template deployment. This this one is useful. Uh, all of them are useful, of course. Uh, but this one, uh, most of the time, I'm checking. A lot of the times I'm checking this one to true in order to grant Azure DevOps, the Azure DevOps pipeline, access to the key vault in order to retrieve secrets from it, 
uh, and put it in some configuration setting or something like that. So this one's useful. Don't need it at the moment. So I won't specify it. So that this is the tenant ID. Is the tenant? Let me see. I already specified it. It's required. I guess this should always be the same. Um, so um, what I let's just deploy it without access policies for now in order to make it as simple as possible. We can always add them later on. So this is what I need, the name and the tenant ID in which I'm in. So I have to specify this new key fault template over here. Key fault is with a capital V. Default.json. Is this correct? Yes, this is correct. So, what, what we have over here, just to, to recap uh, what we discussed or what we talked about in the Fortnet webcast. We have this parameter section with some, well, default parameter stuff. And then we have some variables with the naming of our resources. So we define the names of our resources over here. Also, which link templates we have and where the where they are located. So as you might remember, what is uh, what I let you see in the pipeline, we're copying files to some storage account and we're receiving the location and the SAS token in some uh, well pipeline uh, variable and passing it along in our override template parameters. So we're using it over here in order to specify the location of the link template in order to deploy it. So the name of the resource, so a 4DN cost storage, 4DN cost hosting, site, insights. So we now have key vault added to the list. Let me add key vault over here. And just copy paste. Oh, key vault. This is great. Cause fault. So this this new well uh, autocomplete is awesome, which is added. I don't know which revision, but it's recent, or at least it wasn't here as far as I know a couple of years ago. So now we can just, well, strong type uh, your variables, which is great. Um, so I've defined the block which deploys key vault, or at least which should deploy key vault. And now I need to add a new well, deployment to my resources block. So all of these are uh, resource deployments. So I'll just add one at the bottom in order not to disturb, in order to get the flow going. Oh, as you can see, we have some SQL servers and databases over here in the main template, because this is the spot where we showed the viewers in the webcast how the copy uh, works. The copy is a great function, and you should definitely learn about it. Uh, watch our Fortinet webcast First, let me let me also post the link in chat. Um, YouTube, where is it? You can also find it on. Uh, well, you can find it on my channel, of course. 
So let me post it. Send the message. So my YouTube channel. And if you check out the latest for that net webcast, we talk about uh, some some which is named for uh, DN costs zero eight advanced arm templates where we talk a bit about the where we talk a bit about the copy function. Let's check it out. So now uh, what we have over here? Key vault. Yes. Key vault name. And we want to deploy. This is the place location of the template. And this is the instance name. Uh, all of my resources have an instance name. But we also want to specify the tenant ID. Because the tenant ID is an input parameter which we have to specify. So tenant ID. And if I'm not mistaken we can get this via the subscription function subscription dot dot tenant id i don't know why this didn't work the first time dot yes tenant id this should work. Removing the comma. So this template is valid, hopefully. So what have I changed? I've added key fault. I've added key faults to my uh, repository and added Default to the main as you deploy the JSON and a new deployment. So this is what I want. Stage, stage, added default, the arm template. Also pushing it. Oh, I'm committing to master. Well, because why not? Don't we have a pull request policy in place? Apparently not. So where is files? Deployment just now. Oh, we probably removed the pull request uh, policy, which is good. So this this will well speed up the development this evening. Oh, this is nice. So I have 91 dropped frames. OBS Studio tells me, which is 0.1%. I'm streaming and recording for 42 minutes. And the CPU isn't doing anything. 30 frames per second. And there is some stuff I can't see. Oh, apparently I'm uploading with what's this? 3 and I think this is 3 megabytes per second for a 180p stream. I wanted to stream or I wanted to record in 4K but apparently I've had some settings wrong in uh, in OBS, so I don't. So it's recording in uh, 180p now, which is good enough, of course. Recordings, few details. So we're in 40 minutes, and the file size is about. It's a bit less as one gigabyte. 
so 45 minutes sh should be about one gigabyte so if i had recorded this in 4k it would probably be something in the range of four gigabytes since it's four times as big i don't know how, how this math works maybe there's some compression which helps so let me check uh check the build pipeline three minutes ago the deployment is going on so i have to i've used my net one subscription which is in my personal portal that I share <coughs> let's see subscriptions do I have it over here no or at least do I have multiple what's in this subscription resource groups for dot net um, no portal switching the tenant yes this is it so this is the fortnite one subscription and if i'm lucky there will be some key fault added in a couple of minutes oh it's not here yet so i have some databases which are costing me money oh no these are the the serverless uh, the serverless databases so they don't cost anything if you've missed it sql azure now has the sql azure now has the serverless offering or less serverless sql azure database which means is you still get the regular SQL, SQL Azure but when it's doing nothing it spins down it gets inactive and it'll well pause your SQL database when it's not used this is very useful if you have some well database which is doing stuff during the day or during the evening and not during and not doing stuff the rest of the day so you only pay for well the peak times and not for the well off times you do have to know for sure if you have s such off times because otherwise it's well it is a bit more expensive if i'm uh, i'm not sure but i think it's a bit more expensive compared to the regular offering so better check it out before you implement it still something worth considering if you have some well, schedule tasks, schedule job. Let me refresh this. So I don't see any key fault being added. Which means my deployment probably went wrong. Yes, it has. So what did I do wrong? Resource, failed state. An invalid value was provided for access policies. Yes, I specified no value. As we can see. And I thought it was an optional field.
access policies requires no. Well, actually, I think this is a bug. Is there some place I can? I thought you could respond to the documentation and add bugs to it, or at least do I have to sign in for this? I didn't think so. So I'm signed in now. <coughs> Still can't mention something. Azure templates and mention bug. Azure DevOps. I think it's on GitHub. Not a quick start template, but maybe I can get to this via Azure Docs. I'm also not sure if this is a bug in the template. Azure Docs, which is the regular Docs, or at least. That's what I thought. Articles. Well, might want to note this. I have some contacts who know ARM templates and people to contact, so when specifying this resource JSON oh, removing the white space what did I receive? I'm receiving this so, um, I think this error in the output. So, I'll, ch I'll check in if I can contact someone about this after stream. It's not necessary to, to do this live. But it's easy to fix, or at least it should be easy to fix. So, uh, hmm. I thought it was over here. Access policies is in the properties, and it's an array of objects. Let me specify. An array, an empty array of, well, empty, emptiness. Fork. And an empty axis. Push.
see what it's doing. The pipeline is running. Let's just continue. So I'll, um, I'll just for safe measures, I'll create a new feature branch. Sure. <coughs> sure. I check out F create. So let's assume the the key vault will get created now. What I want to do is add the manage the density of the of the grant grant app service identity to key vault in order to retrieve secrets for now. For now that's good enough. So back to uh, well the app service the app service uh, template. It has the property identity to system assigned, which means whenever this app service is getting deployed, it will also get an identity in the tenant, uh, which is managed by Azure. We're outputting this managed identity via an output variable, so I should be able to reference this uh, in my main template and pass it along to my key vault template. So let me add type string. In a production environment, you probably don't want to use uh, a property with the type string for this. Uh, but you probably want to use an array of identities or an array of strings for this in order to add multiple identities or well multiple identities uh, at, in in one t in one go to the access policies at the moment I don't want to complicate stuff so let's just add this one And it's also a question, do you want to specify multiple? Because I can imagine you want the app service only to retrieve secrets from the key vault, but some other service should also have put or, or a post or a, what's it called? Delete, uh, delete permissions. So it depends, of course. Uh, well, it depends. So I have this app managed identity. It is a lot of copy paste stuff going on over here. So I can see in a big template why this makes sense. I'm struggling a bit to see why I would do this in a small template. Maybe, maybe it'll get to me later. Because in a small template, you can just see everything in one go. And it doesn't make sense to copy paste this stuff. Because if I didn't do it, this, the template would be much smaller. I'll just keep it for now. Because why not? So I need to specify a property over here. Let's see how it looks. So this is how it looks. Whoopsie. Format. So we have this tenant ID, which is a variable tenant. Tenant. 
the object ID. This is the managed identity. So uh, variables. Uh, the managed identity. What what I'm outputting over here is the the object ID. Whoa. Let me. Oh, this uses the old notation. Still works, but. This is old stuff, legacy, well, not legacy, but this is 2015 stuff, and you can do this better, let's say better. I think I tweeted about it last week. Let me search the tweet. Uh, Twitter. Twitter profile. So, tweets and answers. So, there was the MVP summit. Mm. I posted about this quite some time ago. Yes. So the way to do the referencing of a managed identity nowadays would be to oh, this is old stuff. Reference yes, this oh this looks rather the same. Oh, I'm returning the complete object over here. Okay, <laughs> never mind me. I'm just babbling. This is good stuff. Yes. This is actually what you want. So now I have this object, this identity object, which has the Where's the Stack Overflow post? The tenant ID and the principal ID. And the principal ID is the object I need over here. If I'm not mistaken. We'll see in a couple of minutes. CPU is still doing zero to nothing, which is good. So I have this application ID. What is. I don't remember this setting. Application ID. What does it do? What does it do? Oopsie. Application ID is not mandatory of the client making the request on behalf of the principal. Okay, so this is probably necessary if you're doing some delegated. Maybe. Well, I don't need it now. Oh, one of my lights just failed on me. Moment. Works again. Hopefully. Uh, so I don't. I only need the tenant ID, the object ID, and the permissions. So this, I, I want to get permissions on the secrets. I don't want to get keys. I can remove this one. Get. And I'm not sure if I do or do not need list. 
recipe in order to get secrets from key vault. I'm not sure, but let me just add it just for just to be sure. Get and list, and I don't need the others. I'm not sure if the list is needed. Well, I'm not typing any C sharp code today, so I won't be testing this out. This should be good enough. App service managed identity now has an access policy to get and list secrets. Of course, I also need to add this. Um, parameter to the main template value is so in the value now I need to reference the um, this one so I already did this over here I'm outputting the complete object of the managed identity. I don't need this. I only need the principal ID. Does this work? With a bit of luck. This is, has been outputted. Yeah, this has been outputted. Or should have been outputted. Let's see how the, ob what, how the object looks like. This is the copy step. Next step. Deployment output is the app service managed identity. It has a tenant ID and the principal ID. It, oh, it also has a client ID, a secret. Okay, it has a lot of good stuff. <laughs> we might not want to log this. Oh. I need the principal ID. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Principal ID. Maybe I'll need to only log this. App service managed identity. So it, this hopefully this is a bit safer. So the principal ID, well it's the object ID which is stored in the active directory, which isn't well something we should be concerned about. Let's see if the JSON parser is picking this up correctly. So uh, as you can see, I'm using the output parameter of the the app service deployment managed identity, which is this thing, and the value of it. Now I want the principal ID. Never done this before. Most of the time, I'm just copy pasting stuff around in a project to see if stuff works. So I'm passing it along and using it over here. Oh, let's see if the deployment has succeeded. I thought I saw some red deployment, which isn't good. Yeah. What's the problem over here? Fault name must be blah, blah, blah. And not fault name must be between characters. Name must begin with a letter. Oh, so you can't have a 4DN cast fault. Rookie mistake. 4DN cast fault. Uh, 
I better do this in the master branch. So let me just push this stuff. Commit. Wow, this is an annoying number. It's very chilly. Next. So now we're back on the master branch and let me just for with a letter instead of number. Fingers crossed, hopefully this will work. Better merge master to this branch. See what happens. The pipeline is wow well done. I hope Edward doesn't mind me using up all of her all of his build minutes. He can use some of mine if he's mad about it. So the music is still good for you? Not too loud, too soft? Do you like the music? I don't like all of them. Well, this one is okay. It's deploying my template. Let's see what happens. It's done, it's done, it's done. Let me check the output. So, deployment, app service managed identity, it's still, uh, oh wow, it's still this thi complete thing. I had expected it. Oh no, I'm deploying master. Sorry, sorry. So, there should be a key fault here now. Yes for the end cost fault and no one is able to do anything. It's empty. I can't do anything with it because I don't have any permissions. So this is good, this is good, A big win.
So for the people who don't know what this is, so all of my GUIDs in the Azure portal are blurred. And this is because I have installed this nice little extension called Mask Portal, which you can set to toggle. Can I? Yeah. To toggle GUIDs in the in the in the Azure portal. So any potential secrets won't be exposed. Any potential secrets you have over here. It's available for well, nearly every browser, <coughs> or at least for Chrome and Firefox, and I think Edge Gym also, but I haven't tested it out myself. Only on Firefox. So I have this nasty cough. It's not COVID, it's just a nasty cough. Or at least I don't think it is COVID. Otherwise I would be much sicker from what I understand. So this is good, so this is good, this is good. Um, so was I done over here? Yeah, I have, oh, this should be done. Let me just merge it back to the master branch because I have the power. I have the power. Merge into master. And push. This should trigger another build. Obviously, you can also do this manually by, well, doing some Azure CLI commands or PowerShell commands and trigger a build or trigger a deployment. Uh, I've blogged about it in uh, a couple of weeks or months back. Azure Managed Identity. Yeah, with link templates from your local machine. So this is all fun and well. Uh, how to deploy it? Well, just up. I, I've specified everything over here, so I'll just paste the link. And this is how you can deploy ARM templates from your local machine. You have to upload all of the files to some location. Do an AZ storage container generate SOS for this location and then deploy the stuff with your deployment create. Then you're done with it. So the build is done. Checking out the release. Hopefully this one will succeed, which means I've done it correctly in one go. Which probably isn't the case, but it would be nice, of course. So I'm using Stream Deck in order to start to start my stream, but apparently should I add a title? Start tweet. Start this one didn't get posted. Is there someone in chat who knows? What could be it? So I've changed my name. Maybe I've did too much in 
I mean moving it around. This, well, could be I need a delay over here. I'll ask someone who understands this stuff, or maybe Google it later. So, evaluate as I expected. This doesn't work. The template output app service main identity is not valid. Expected object action. Okay, so this means what I'm inputting in the um, yeah. What what this means is I've seen this before. Is what I've specified over here is a string, the app service man's identity, and apparently I'm passing along an object which isn't what I expected. I expected it to be a GUID. Is there some way to debug this? Deployments. Maybe I can see more over here. Is it ordered by date? Yes. Error details. A raw error. Yeah, it's telling me the same thing. What I would have liked to see is the object it's outputting. Can I see this over here? Outputs. So this isn't... Well, maybe just put it over here on the other screen. Toggle. Copy. What do I have over here? It's the principal ID. It's the tenant ID, the principal ID. The client secret URL. So yeah, it's 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 kind of secret stuff. But I had expected being able to use so let me remove the actual values. So this is what the managed identity property looks like. So I had expected when doing this. Does this yeah. When doing this I had expected I would be able to navigate to one of those properties because this value is the object or at least that's what I thought dot principal id apparently not Apparently not. There's a 
probably something I can Google. Arm template with managed ID. The use principle. Well, this looks like it's what I want. Oh, this is actually the post I was a couple of minutes ago. To get the actual values, sort of then reference them with the following. Yeah, uh, but I want to use the output parameter. Maybe I should dig into output parameters. I'm not using them all. I'm not using them nearly enough. I'm not used over here. Yeah, I don't want to use. I want to use the output parameter, so I know how to do this. Oh, my own web uh, using MZ. No, this is also different. I need a fav icon. That's for sure. Uh, output mm. <laughs> yeah but I want to use it this is about using different steps another task Okay, maybe this is it. No, this shouldn't be hard. If there's not something over here, I'll just check out the docs. Documentation. <coughs> value type string value is this what's property name value. So it looks like, not sure, but it looks like I can't use nested properties. Arm template outputs nested properties.
someone is doing this stuff. Well, maybe I'll just... I'll leave this one to see what happens. And I'm passing along. Object. And hopefully... Hopefully... That principal ID work obviously hopefully this works yeah uh, can I use this work I doubt it I seriously doubt it wait just now so the pipeline is triggered I can see the new tags on my Twitch page, so it just takes a while. Cool.
to know. Message from link template. Test file that value. So it's not a strange thought, right? In order to see if you can. Oh, this is also not an object. On template output parameter. parameters there's a lot of PowerShell a lot of people with questions but none of the stuff I find interesting so is this done yet? No. Because why not? Expected object actual string. Okay. I thought we fixed this. App service manager density. Actual string. Oh, the template outputs. Okay. Oh. Oh, would this be it? What was the the previous for uh, cost six logs? Unable to evaluate template outputs. Oh wow! It was this one. I still had object over here, but returning the principal ID. Principal ID. Make this a string. Didn't I change this? Let me check version control. Ah, uh, no, this one. Not. Check this one. No, it was still an it was still an object. Oh how silly of me. String. So this makes a lot more sense. If this is it, of course. String, string. Everything is a string. We can pass along. Cool, cool, cool. Pushing to master. Is this still a yeah, principal ID string? Yes, this looks about right. Using the principal ID again and string. It's already ten o'clock in my time zone. 10 p.m. So, 
I will probably end the stream soon. How big is the file? Two gigabytes. The recording is two gigabytes for one and a half hour of, well, a bit more is one and a half. Okay, that's acceptable. done yet maybe it's the image would it would it be the image No, the file is local. The file is local, so this should just work. Oh no. So the pipeline is done. Or the build pipeline, the release is running. I like this song. Now playing Waves featuring Lindsay Norse. Hmm? Is there some way to like it? Yeah, I can do some thumbs up. I wonder what it'll do with it. It's done. Let's see what the output parameter was. If it was indeed the blah blah blah, principal ID is the string. Yeah, it's the actual value of the principal ID. So ARM templates work just like I expected. I was just, well, too dumb. Too dumb to fix all of the entries of object. So now I should have an access policy with the app service with a uh, for the app service identity with a get and a list permission. Let's check. Looks about right. So the for the encast site, which is the site which has been deployed, now has two the get and the list properties. This is cool. <coughs> so 
this works. Now there's the other identity I want to add and it will just take me a couple of minutes. Yeah, so uh, what, what I discovered a couple of weeks back is when you want your app service to install certificates which are stored in Key Vault. Let me, let me rephrase this. So you have Key Vault where you can store secrets, uh, keys and certificates. So you can also store your uh, SSL certificates, TLS certificates over here, which can be used by your app service in order to, well, add the certificates to your custom domain. So maybe for for the encastsite.com and you want a, sh a sh uh, certificate on it. So you, you can install these certificates via ARM templates, but it's not enough just to have the, the get and the list permissions for this identity and also not enough for the Azure Resource Manager to have the permission. You need to add a specific Azure App Services resource provider to retrieve the certificates from Key Vault and well and install them. So I haven't got a sample. Let me. I, I've just created a blog post about this uh, with some details. Uh, whoa! This is oh this is a, a quote. I might want to fix the styling of a quote. But what you have to do is, uh, I don't have a sample for certificates, so maybe I can find it over here. App service. It's called web, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, this is annoying us. So certificates. So adding certificates looks a bit like this. And you can also, as you can see, specify the key vault ID and the secret name. But if you use this, uh, you need to add Azure App Service Resource Provider to, uh, to have access to key vault. I don't think it's mentioned over here somewhere. Key vault CSM. Well, it might be mentioned in some of those quick starts. Let's just check. So we can copy paste this certificates. No, these aren't you. Well, it does use key vault, but key vault isn't deployed existing key vault secret name. So don't have Did I just click this one? I didn't no I didn't. Also an existing key fault. Yeah, it's not here. It's not deploying key fault in these samples, so uh well, just believe me, you need this. The thing is, as as a couple of friends on Twitter pointed out, this is tenant wide, so this this Azure App Service resource provider uh, exists in, is a principle inside your tenant so it's shared across all of the all of the subscriptions you have inside this tenant which is something you might want but also something you might not want it depends so uh, it can be a bit tricky if you it it, it can be a bit tricky if you use this on a, if you use this on some dev subscription or test subscription add this permission add this access policy to your uh, key vault and also deploy this stuff to production 
and now we have an identity which you can use in dev or test and access production data if you want so this is something to consider um, I won't say don't use it but I will say use with care so in this in this blog post um, I'll, I'll just link it in the, in the chat I'm uh, uh, blog post about the service resource provider. So in this blog post, I explain a bit about it. Uh, I added some nuances, which I just mentioned also. And I'll just copy the scripts. Right. WT, which is my terminal. Oh. I have the wrong uh, subscription over here. Hopefully, oh, uh, I'm not a CLI guru. Probably have to log in with AZ login. Um, with my other account. So this one has, I found some, yes, I need this one, AZ account, AZ account, set subscription, okay. This is good. And now what I need to do is copy this line. So I have to query the Active Directory in order to get the data of my, uh, my service principle. So this is the name of the service principle, AB something something, which I also mentioned over here. And I need the object ID to grant it permission to my key vault. So I'll do it the, well, dirty way. Now I also have to specify this as a parameter. App service resource provider. Because my coworkers are working in a different in a different uh, environment, different tenant, so they can use my do it. But. I can add access policy. Just add this one. New. The resource provider. And now I don't want to get a secret. But I want to get a certificate. Looks like this. And now I have to specify this one. Also over here. Value. Oh, it's probably an input parameter because it depends on. I'll just put it over here. It depends who's running it. Type string. 
So now we have to specify this. Um, so over here, and do I want to do this in the parameters file? Since we're deploying it to my subscription, let's just do this value. This was it. Can I add a comment? Metadata. Metadata syntax. Parameters. Comments. For inline comments, you can easily, but this doesn't work with all tools. Does this work? I've tried this in the past, or at least I thought so. Metadata. Okay. Comments. author okay cool so i'm passing it along in a parameters file i have specified it over here passing it along to my key vault <laughs> might want to switch switch scene so rookie mistake so what i did is i have added this uh parameter I'm in the key vault section so I've added this parameter using it in the variables and added the get certificates permission to it also using it in the main template where I am inputting it as a resource provide parameter and using it in my parameters file. So this should be it. For those of you who missed it, it's somewhere here in the object I got from the command azad list. Good to go. Fork. So I have the resource provider, the parameter, and the additional key vault. Access policy. See what happens. Publishing. camera a bit so whenever I lean to my to my left 
I won't be out of the picture. I could also just slide a bit more to the middle of my desk, of course. Done. Running. Also a nice song of fault. <coughs> I know this page refreshes automatically, it's just sometimes it doesn't. So a couple of, well I guess a couple of months ago I was waiting for my deployment to finish. It was a massive sidecore environment, so with a dozen of app services and I think, well, a couple of databases and SQL servers and lots and lots of stuff. So I was waiting for it and waiting for it because it was failing all the time, so I couldn't do anything else. And after 45 minutes, I pressed the refresh button only to see the deployment was already finished 25 minutes ago, so I was waiting for nothing. So apparently the connection to the backend and my browser broke for some reason. That's why I refresh the page sometimes. Or a lot of the times. Let me also edit the pipeline and remove the debug. It's so annoying. So all the purple text you see in the output is because I've set or we've set the system debug to true, which doesn't make any sense. Well, it was for showing what happens, but uh, what happens in the pipeline when running, but it doesn't make any sense anymore. The debug. better. Is it done yet? Yes, it's done. Let's see what the access policies are now. I expect the app service resource provider to be added to this list. And it has. It has. And it has the get permission. It has the get permission on certificates. Cool. So that's it for this evening. You can't view the, the source code because it's on a private repository in Azure DevOps. Uh, because we're iterating over this for our uh, webcast. Uh, so uh, well, I can share any code with you, but if you have any questions later on, uh, hit me up on one of the social medias uh, I have. Uh, so what I added, well, you could follow along. So uh, I guess we're done. So what, what we did is, let me put my sublime over here. What we did, and I'll zoom in a bit more so you can see it. We've added a key fault to our template and it got deployed to our Azure subscription. We've added the, the managed identity of our app service to this key fault in order to get and list secrets. 
which I struggled a bit with due to uh, well not having set the correct uh, type of of the, the the principal ID which was outputted in the in the script. It was object because we output the complete mesh identity object, and I changed it to just the principal ID, and the types have to match. And lastly, the the last couple of minutes was granting the app service resource provider enough permissions to retrieve secrets from Key Vault and install them on your app service. But be wary of of using this. Be wary of using this inside your production tenants, production subscriptions. That's it for today. Um, well, that's it for today. So uh, I'll be back tomorrow, or at least I hope I'll be back tomorrow with something new. Uh, with something new. It's, uh, it's something I'm working on for uh, demo purposes. It's connecting, well, having uh, two APIs to app services or multiple and securing them. So I want API 1 to connect with API 2, make an HTTP request, uh, but do this in a secure fashion and using their own managed identities for this in order to retrieve data or check if the managed identity, if, if API 1 has enough permissions to query API 2, or if it or if the service is in the correct role or group or whatever. So this is something I, I want to work on, and I probably I will probably work on this tomorrow. So tune in tomorrow at, uh, well, half past eight, my time. I don't know what the time is in your place. Thank you.